What up, friends? I am Jeff Feinberg back here with you for oddschecker.com slash US as we continue to break down the PGA Tour. This week, we are at the Valspar Championship in Tampa Bay uh, at the Innisbrook course. Very difficult course. One of the more difficult courses we get in the entire season on the PGA Tour. Par 71. Uh, right, 7,300 yards, 7,350, I believe the exact number, oh, 7,340, the Innisbrook course. Uh, Paul Casey, back-to-back -back winners here, right? I'm a guy who loves to bet Paul Casey. Didn't bet him at any of the Valspar events that he won, the only events he wins in North America. Can he three-peat? Can he three-peat? Winning scores of minus eight, and minus 10 in his two victories. And I want to say in the last five winners here at the Valspar, we've only had one player shoot lower than 10 under. And that was that Adam Hadwin victory that we were actually able to cash. So hopefully some good vibes here at the Valspar. Difficult, difficult course. We've had a cut line that since 2003 has never been lower than plus one. And that was before we had our new modified cut rules. It used to be 70 in ties. Now it's top 65 in ties. So expect a gong show. We're famous for that snake pit, that closing stretch of holes here. Do not celebrate anything. Do not celebrate a head-to-head -head matchup. Do not celebrate your guy making the cut. Do not celebrate any sort of victory on Sunday until you are through the snake pit. Even if you're choosing to live bet this tournament early. Do not make a live wager if a guy, you li might like his score, if his next coming holes are the snake pit, I'd wait till he finishes it because you'll probably get a better number. Uh, they could host a U.S. Open here, minus the fact that in the middle of the summer in Tampa would be over 100 degrees. The course is difficult enough. Incredibly narrow. The par fives, they're not scorable par fives. They play like true par fives a lot of the time. Always enjoy that. The dogleg par fours. You even tee down off the tee, giving yourself a longer approach into greens because it really is the best option. Because being off the fairway here, an incredibly thick rough and a tree-lined golf course. It's a beautiful golf course. Tree-lined, thick, narrow. Oh, I have a great time watching the Valspar. I certainly would probably shoot 150 if I played there, but I suck. And this ain't about me. Ain't about me. Um, looking at the board, we have two super elites here in, in Justin Thomas and Justin Thomas and Dustin Johnson, guys. Uh, looking at that odds checker grid on my mobile, we're seeing Thomas coming in at um, as the favorite at 10 to 1 and DJ at 12. I got to say, if I were making a move in this range, it would be DJ. DJ would be my bet at 12 to 1. Well, you can make the case for Justin. Obviously, if he wins, nobody is surprised. Uh, if Dustin can figure out those approaches, he might lap this field. We're almost on the point of waiting for Dustin to win an event by multiple strokes or just win an event in general. Also, on top of that, Dustin Johnson at 12 to 1, I could argue all day that is incredible line value. Go look at his odds to win majors. Go look at his odds to win majors. You can get him at 12 to 1 to win uh, the Valspar at Innisbrook. So if that's something you're into, I ain't going to argue at you off it. And I, as I just said, I made the case that there's incredible um, line value. Patrick Reed is here. He is 20 to 1. I always love Patrick Reed. Victor Hovland, oh, I think he could horse this. Like, I think he could take apart this place. I'm always a sucker for Hovland. Paul Casey in his 22 to one is probably going to be totally forgotten, which is so funny because so many people like me bet him at the masters, bet him at the players. And now he's at a course at a weak field that he's won twice in a row. Maybe this is the time to bet him. I am not. I'll probably regret that. Although winning three times in a row in any event, who are you? Tiger Woods. So that would be a huge ask, but I'd be happy um, for Casey and that Corey Connors number. I love Corey Connors. Love him. Love him. But but he is now priced in a tier that I that I find unacceptable. Can he win this event? Absolutely. Is he priced wrong? Yes. Do guys win out of a wrong pricing tier all the time? Yes. So good luck to you, Corey. I'm I was kind of surprised to see the books are afraid of him this week. As for me, I'm starting my card out, guys, um, with Ty Hatton. 
Ty Hatton, 28 to 1. That bet is available at Bet365. Will Hill, use that odds checker grid, a consortium of sites. But it is as low as 22 to 1 when seeing that odds checker grid. I am a sucker for Hatton. He is the number eight player in the world, and I believe he's being slept on this week at Innisbrook. He was 18th at the, at the Masters, which for him, considering he never shot below 70 there, I think might... Um, no, sorry, now I'm thinking of Daniel Berger. Since he never made the cut at the Masters, I'm quite proud of that that um, that finish for Hatton at Augusta. He never played well there before, so I think that's an incredibly positive vibe moment. He finished T38 at the Heritage. He gained with his driver and approaches and around the green. He was abandoned by his putter. The approaches are coming back. means I want a part of Hatton. That putter abandoned him at Heritage. He also was like four on over through that first round and came back and battled to make the cut. So I would argue, well, that T39 isn't great. I would say it's pretty misleading for how he probably played his final three rounds. So I'm excited to get back in on Hatton at a course that I believe works for him. His only North American win is in Florida. Long, uh, or sorry, narrow penal, exacting. Those are the types of courses I would want money on Ty Hatton. So I'm going back to the well with Ty Hatton. Continuing the bets, uh, we're not really leaving the range, so to say. We're only moving up a bit. Sung J M, 33 to 1 using that odds checker grid. It is as low as 25 when checking out that grid. We are in, how do we put this? When we got to Florida, I couldn't wait to get start betting Sung J again. The Bermuda grass, the Florida vibes, his Honda win last year. To me, it all set up for Sung Jay season. Florida hasn't really been kind to Sung Jay. In fact, in the matter is, a lot of the season from certain statistics have not been kind. Every result he has has been driver and putter based, which is pretty remarkable for a player that can be so dominant with his irons. Well, guess what, friends? Guess what, friends? We finally got life in those approaches. We finally got life on those approaches. He gained over three strokes with those approaches at the Heritage. He hadn't gained with the approaches like that since Hawaii, Tournament of Champions, Kapalua. If the irons are back for Sungjae, you must be betting Sungjae. Irons back, Sungjae, Bermuda Green, Narrow, Penal, it all adds up. He has a T4 finish here in his debut appearance at the Valspar. So, yeah, I'm here for Sung JM. Florida has not been the results I expected from Sung J, but we're going to close it with a bang. I'm confident that he contends. Moving on, up a little bit, 40 to 1. This is available at points bet. It's as low as 33 elsewhere when using that odds checker grid. So, let's make sure we catch the best numbers. Dos Wonder Kid, Joachim Neiman, exacting, accurate. Long irons, long par fours, taking off dog legs, clubbing down. For me, I am all about Neiman. He checks so many boxes as to what type of skill sets will prevail here. Um, his iron play to me can be some of the best in the world when he is on. It, it had been trending in the right direction for most of the year. I really do what is required at, at Innisbrook. Very small greens, guys. Very small greens. Well, I talk about Neiman, let me say this. The greens are so small. If you got to scramble, you're probably in trouble. You're probably in trouble. You're going to have to make those key saves. But I'm betting a guy like Neiman, we're going to we're going to find those small greens and even a guy like Hovland who people are worried about his um his scrambling and I'll even defend Corey Connors here. Why is Corey Connors so low? Well, the course is a perfect fit. His course history is great, and his form is great. The greens are small. Corey Connors hits small greens. He's one of the best iron players in the world. He, like He's hitting irons at a Zalatoris just, Justin Thomas level right now. I'm still not betting him. That being said, Hovland, Connors, you're betting on that ceiling. Are you betting on them needing to scramble to win? No, you're betting on them being absolutely unconscious with their irons because that's what their ceiling is. When you bet guys to win, you're betting on what their ceiling is because you only win on the PGA Tour with your ceiling. 
Anyhow, I am betting Joachim Neiman. I believe his ceiling game works absolutely perfect for this Innisbrook course. Moving back, last pick, defending champion here. Well, it had been forever since he's won here, but the number is big. Gary Woodland at Borgata, 80 to 1. Biggest number I'm seeing on that odds check grid. Also available at 70, something I would easily get into. Club down, love, like, well, he never won here. This used to be like the, the prototype Stenson course, who's probably still 100 to 1, but he's been horrible. Even Rose carried him through that team event. It's nice to see Stenson make the cut at the Masters. Nonetheless, Stenson used to be like 16 to 1 here every year, 18 to 1, and it would be, he's the three wood disciple of the PGA Tour. Well, poor man's three wood, old great Stenson to me was always Gary Woodland. We're going to club down here, and the strokes gained Tita Green was unconscious for Gary in Texas leading into the Masters. Uh, I don't want to make too big of a deal about that, but it was over nine strokes Tita Green. Those are the signs we need from Gary. We now to go to a club down, driver out of hand. He's one of the best players, in my opinion, when this becomes um, a required skill set at an event. The iron play can catch, fire, uh, fourth in Texas, 40th at Augusta. The, the Masters doesn't work for him at all. I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. So we're kind of creeping in the right direction but the tee to green game at texas is is still flashing off the page to me i don't want to overrate it but at 80 to 1 i think there's a great spot here for gary woodland to catch that life of course that he won it when he was a young pup but this is a woodland type course small greens club down um you know obviously we're going to need some putt luck when it comes to gary but he's a much better uh short game player than he was in the past and he's finally feeling healthy again since his little COVID snag <clears throat> earlier in the year. I'm Jeff Feinberg. I got some bombs too. You know what I'll give them to you right now, even though we'll talk about them tomorrow. Killer Keith, 200 to 1. And uh, Luke List, flirting what? Like 175, 200 to 1. We'll really break those down. Killer Keith Mitchell. Those are two hardcore Bermuda, Florida guys that have that track record. So that is uh, something that I'm looking to. We'll do that tomorrow with some props and everything. I'm Jeff Feinberg. Those are the four picks I got for you today. Hatton, M, Neiman, Woodland. Let's get it. We're getting presents this week. It's NFL draft. Okay. I'm a Chargers fan. I'm expecting some found socks and underwear, socks and underwear, foundation pieces, a left tackle, stability in the crotch, a left tackle right? We're not getting a speed bike. We're not getting a receiver. Nothing fun. We did that last year. We hit a home run. Now we protect the house. New socks, new underwear. I'll be back tomorrow with more PGA Tour picks. It'll be my props edition. And as I said, we're going to talk about some long shots. I'm Jeff Feinberg. Uh, like, sub, comment. So all these comment, tell me who you think is going to win the Valspar and sub. So these drop right into your feed. Thanks for watching.